My name is Ken Lopez, a native of Monterey. I first started playing guitar when I was about 13, 14, and it was because of wanting to learn folk songs. The famous people in the movement, meaning Joan Baez and Bob Dylan, but especially Joan, she was living here on and off during that period. I remember sitting in Hootenannies, if you remember, which were just group sing-alongs and they would take place in people's house and I remember being in a home in, in uh, somebody's house in Carmel uh, and I, uh, I was probably about 14 or so and, uh, and this voice, this female voice rising up from behind me um, and it was the first time I experienced Joan Baez's voice at close range. It was almost angelic. In the late 50s it burst into public consciousness with groups like Peter, Paul, and Mary, the Kingston Trio with the big hit record, Tom Dooley. We, know, we knew Bob Dylan through his songs and through occasional chance meetings here in town. And you know Joan Baez through her songs. It's interesting that both of them became international stars and yet were very accessible when they were out and about here locally and never took on the airs and seemingly the trappings of stardom as you would think of it. Richard Farina, I knew of originally as Joan's brother-in-law and I had a number of encounters with him, saw him play. He was coming into his own as a writer and I think that's where his greatest strengths were. And it's quite tragic that he was killed here on his motorcycle. The tragic aspect is that Richard was killed the day that his book was finally published. His moment was never fully realized. You know, we have a, a theme of young artists dying young and wondering what could have become and uh, uh, since there's so little published work there that um, we don't have a lot to go on but um, I do think that that's, that would have been his milieu, uh, would have been as a, a literary uh, Person, personality rather than a musical personality. If one were to look at the musical evolution that has happened since the early 60s and look at the song forms, the song content, there has been both a tremendous evolution in certain styles of popular music and yet much of it draws on the music that was the focus of the folk and blues revolutions in the 60s. Uh, especially guitar-based music, I would say, owes a, a great percentage of its character and uh, underpinnings to this music. Um, and the singer-songwriter revolution that has been going on now for some years, uh, uh, the fact that there are um, literally thousands and thousands of young people uh, picking up instruments, mostly guitars, and writing songs. And it really, it owes it, uh, that, that inspiration really goes back to the 60s, uh, where that, uh, the Dillons and all the others of that period really started that. The awareness of this hidden culture, first Appalachian folk music, and then the blues culture from the South, and beginning to unravel the threads of uh, of this seemingly lost music and culture that was uh, that survived at first only in recordings and then uh, miraculously some of the actual original practitioners were still alive and so this is the the the, uh, the folk revival as it began to unfold in the early 60s and the um, the importance is that it is really the underpinning uh, not only of what Hendrix did but uh, Cream and Led Zeppelin and all the, the heavy rock bands that were borrowing from the Chicago players uh, such as Hubert Sumlin who played with Howlin' Wolf and Hubert just passed away a few weeks ago. Um, the, the, uh, so much of what they did was a refashioning or a reinterpretation of existing musical forms and styles and the, uh, and, and the, the power of those original forms still echo today in the in popular music so that is the the you know the the folk revival begat the blues revival which begat 
this tremendous shift in electric rock and roll or rock music, really, uh, in the uh, mid to late 60s. And the pivot point really is the Monterey Pop Festival. There really is a before and after.